In this video, I'll show you how to combine STL files directly in Bamboo Studio. The video is actually part four of a series where I make dust collector quick connector. But the techniques I show you can be used to understand how to assemble any other STL file in the studio. Before you jump into this, I do have a few pointers. First of all, keep this simple. Bamboo Studio is not a CAD program. It is a 3D slicer. By simple, I mean simple geometries and only a few parts, preferably only two parts to assemble. If your project is more complex than that, I would strongly consider using a, a, a real CAD program. So why bother in the first place? Easy answer. Converting STLs even in a powerful CAD program is no walk in the park and can take many steps and cause fr frustrations. Conversely, for simple combinations of objects, it's actually not hard to take care of this right here in the Bamboo Studio Slicer. I'm going to make two videos on this subject. In this one, I'll show you the fundamentals and how to move the pieces accurately and how to measure those movements. I will use objects that are centered on the same axis. In the following video, I'll show you a really cool trick to align objects that are not centered on the same axis. This one had me scratching my head until a solution hit me. I showed you previously how to assemble these two objects in Fusion, and now I'll do the exact same thing in Bamboo Studio. So I will open Bamboo Studio and I'll import the base inlet into Bamboo. I hit Control i and pick the right file. In order for you to understand how to combine objects, we need to talk about coordinates. If you select the Move icon, you will see the Bamboo assigned coordinates for the objects. Bamboo uses two coordinate systems. One is in relation to the build plate called World Coordinates, and the other one called object coordinates. These are logical. Look at the world coordinates here. The first object always gets imported right in the center of the build plate. Since the build plate is 256 millimeter square, the center of the build plate is obviously at 128 millimeter x axis and 128 millimeter y axis. The z axis is the only weird one. For some reason, Bamboo assigns the exact midpoint along that axis as the center. Look at this. If I select the Scale tool, I will get the dimensions of the object. And as you see, the object is 22 millimeters high. So half is 11 millimeter, as we saw in the coordinates. Back to the Move tool, and let's look at the object coordinates. And again, since we have not moved the object, it is quite logical that Bamboo sees the object in the zero position on all axes, all three axes. Yeah. I will move the tool, uh, the object here and refresh the move tool and uh, take a look at what, what happened. The X and Y position obviously changed according to our movement, while the Z axis remained at 11 millimeters. Since Bamboo always makes the object stick to the build plate, this makes sense. It's uh, super easy to get it back to the starting point by selecting the object, right-clicking, and just select Center. To assemble the two objects, we cannot just import the other part. Here's why. I obviously have to raise the part to the top of the first part, but since Bamboo makes imported parts stick to the fill plate, I cannot lift the object along the z-axis. So I will delete that item again and try a better way. I will right click on the base and select add part and then I will load the thread object. 
Right click on that part and select center. Now the two parts are aligned along the X axis and the Y axis. But what about the Z axis? Well, remember, bamboo selects half the height as the center. So in this case, 20.75 millimeters. So in order to put the, to put the thread part on top of the base, we need to move it the height of the base or 22 millimeters, which means the new set coordinate is the sum of the current coordinate plus the 22 millimeters or a total of 42.75 millimeters. So let's insert that measurement and be done with this. 42.75 on the Z axis. Hit enter or tab. Perfect. The parts are perfectly aligned and they move as one part now. You are now ready to print and save the new assembled component. If you're really sharp, you may have noticed something incorrect I said. When adding a part, Bamboo does not actually set that set coordinate as half the height of that part. It gets more complicated. You don't need to worry about this math since the number you see is what you use. But just for your understanding, let me show you what Bamboo calculates. In other words, how did Bamboo calculate the 20.75 millimeter as the set coordinate? I will uh, take a look at the thread part by itself to figure this out. So I will insert the thread part right here. To get the dimensions, again, I select the scale tool. As you can see, the height is 63.5 millimeters. Here's how this is handled when the part is not imported, but rather inserted as an added part. Bamboo takes the height of the new inserted part. Then it deducts the height of the original part that a new part is added to. The result is then cut in half. So 63.5 minus 22 equals 41 and a half. Half of that is 20.75. I don't know why it's done this way, but the software engineers probably had some good reasons. But the thing is, it's not important because as I mentioned, as I mentioned, you only need to look at the result to get the two numbers that you need to add. Before I end this video, I want you to show you a possible surprise you may encounter and how to handle it. It happened to me when I tried to assemble a larger quick connector. I'm just going to quickly assemble those parts as I just described in this video uh, so we can get to the problem so I can show you that. You see it here? These are not perfectly aligned. There's a gap. So what's the problem? Let's look even closer. See that tiny little sliver sticking out? When I made the thread part, apparently a small sliver of thread stuck outside the cylinder. This too can be fixed in bamboo directly. I will repair that thread object. I import the part and I flip it around so the faulty part is on top. Okay. 
Now I'll reselect the part and I'm gonna uh, check the dimensions here. Hit the scale tool and you can see it's not 63 and a half like it should be, it's 63.93 and that's that little sliver. We need to get rid of that. So I select the tool again and now I select the cutting tool. And in the height I set my 63 and a half and I perform the cut. Bingo, we're done. It's gone and it's uh, the way we want it. Now you save this file as a new STL, import that and assemble it as before. I hope this video was of use to you. If it was, you might want to look for my next video in this series where I download an awesome dust collecting collection uh, router attachment and I add my own airlock connector. Those parts are not aligned on their centers as you see here. I will show you how to line those up for this result. For now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.